Hello and welcome back to another Zebra Frypad getting started tutorial. So today we're going to take a look at how to use live booleans within Zebra Frypad. Live boolean is a feature that has been on the desktop for a while and it comes shipped with Zebra Frypad now. First thing you need to understand is going back to our subtools is the order of your subtools. So if we want to add a mesh over here and create a cube, for example. And we want this cube to subtract our mesh, or maybe just some damage like I have on this model. This is, in essence, a still a separate subtool, which means if I isolate this, this is the, what the subtool looks like. And if I activate my polyframe, you can see the subtool is right there, and it's cutting that part of the mesh. If we want to add another Boolean subtool, all we need to do, let's just move this cube around. Let's move it up here to the front. And if I go over to my subtool palette and I press and hold on my subtool, we have down here an option called Boolean process. And if we click this, you can see you can select what sort of action is this subtool going to be applying to the subtools that are above it. So if I click subtraction, and now I have to turn on live boolean down here, I can see that this mesh is now subtracting to the subtool that's above it. And you can see it's not actually subtracting the eyes. And that's because our eyes are way down here in our subtool order. So if we want to move them up and move them above the subtool that is live booleaning or subtracting the bust, now, if I move my camera around a little bit, you can see it's actually subtracting the eyes, even though they're a separate subtool. The benefit of this, obviously, is that I can make cuts. I can test out and see the thickness of my model, if I had any thickness. And obviously, also, you can do very quick damage. So let's say I'm going to redo this damage on the nose, or maybe the whole, this whole chunk of the face has been damaged to some degree. If I'm doing this, I can obviously still sculpt on this subtool. I can dynamesh it, for example. And if I go to my brushes and I use my clay buildup brush, you can see I'm actually sculpting on the Boolean mesh. If I start actually going through and start sculpt, I can remove parts of that Boolean. So if I isolate this with solo mode, you can see what I'm doing. It's basically I'm sculpting reversely. So if I want to add some damage, maybe I'll pick the trim dynamic by going to our brush palette, to our art surface sculptural brushes, and then tapping this trim dynamic or maybe trim adaptive. Let me see. Let's use trim adaptive. And as soon as I start tapping on the screen, I'm actually, it seems like I'm sculpting on the original bust subtool, but I am not. I'm just sculpting the other mesh, but reversed. And obviously then you, you lack a little bit of resolution, so you can tap and hold the Dynamesh button and up your resolution, pressing and holding the control key or masking key, and then just dragging a mask outside will redo that Dynamesh. So this is a non-destructive workflow. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.